So it's time to review the low poly story based lighting based challenge. So today I'm going to be reviewing the competition and looking at all your work. I'll be giving lots of tips and tricks and critiquing people's work. At the end I'll be announcing the winner and I'll be talking about the next competition so stay tuned for that. So the competition was to create a low poly styled landscape thinking mainly about story with a focus on lighting and the idea was to have a morning lighting, noon, evening and night. Is that right? I can't even remember what my own competition was. No, it was a morning, evening and nighttime render. That was the thinking. So let's take a look at how you got on. I'm not going to go through these in any particular order, uh, just as they came in. And I won't be showing the entirety of everybody's work, but there will be a few things that I want to point out and that I think that can be helpful to people out there. So let's take a look at Luis Mariano. I think it's Luis. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I do apologize. Uh, it's a bit of an English ignorance thing because it, we speak one language uh, because it's the most widely spoken and that's a bit naughty really because we don't learn other languages, generally speaking that is. So looking at this piece of work, it's lovely. There's a lot going on. It's got a really nice story. I like the idea of looking through a window and how it's kind of framed in that sense. I might have been tempted to move into the window a bit further, so just bring the frame in a touch. But the idea is fantastic. I'm just showing the nighttime one here, which works really well. It's got a nice blue light and it looks like a moonlit scene. What would have also been good is maybe a bit of light coming from the computer screen, but I'm probably going a bit too in depth and hypercritical because it's a really nice piece. So the more finite I get about things, the better your piece is. There's a lot of work gone into the tree, but I don't actually think it adds to the image. I think the real story is inside the window. That's why I'd like to move in a bit closer to the window and have less of the tree. Also, it's quite busy, the tree, and it distracts the eye. That was the problem with one of my pieces, I think. It was just way too busy, and your eye doesn't quite know where to go and focus. That could also be said for the bricks. A lot of work's gone into making these individual bricks and to add variation, but it can detract a little bit from the final image. I might be being a bit too harsh there because the tree is so busy that it makes everything seem busy. I like the use of the blind in front as well. It adds a bit of mystery to the image as it obscures the main character slightly. Lovely piece, well done. Next we got Emerga's piece. Now this I really like. I think it's the color palette and that's something worth talking about. So even though I'm showing the three times a day at the same time, or Emerga is, you can see a distinctive color palette of blue and yellow coming through. And this is someone who obviously knows a bit about art and composition as well as color, because blue and yellow go really nicely together. And the use of only two colors there, or we could say three with a bit of purple in there as well, gives a real crispness and quality to the image. It's also got a nice little story with the plane crashing down to this strange planet here. And the direction of all the crystals pointing across at an angle gives it a lovely composition. Excellent work. And that's something important to think about is composition. We'll go on to that in later vlogs, I think. Here's one here from XRDJ6C, one of my admins. And again, a lovely story. Uh, we're looking out of some sort of cave into the distance and we've got a nice light looking distance so it's faded in the distance, as I've suggested before, and then a dark saturated foreground. So it gives a real illusion of depth, very nice. The only thing I would say is that it's very dark in the scene and maybe a bit of blue lighting might have helped rather than taking away light. That's really important. So when you're lighting at night, you give it a blue light and don't take away too much light, otherwise you can't see much, unless you're giving a really horror type of atmosphere where you don't want people to be able to see much at all. Next we've got Yatagumi. Now I've shown the nighttime one because I really like the purple and blue lighting. It gives it a lovely atmosphere, quite a spooky atmosphere. The only thing I would say, it might be worth having a bounce light in there as well because there's a lot of black in the scene. So what I mean by bounce light is a light coming from the other direction just to pull it a bit away from the black. The other thing is it's a tiny bit busy with all the grass and in low poly scenes it's better to go either full grass so it completely covers things or really patchy grass otherwise it becomes really busy and distracts. Now here's some lovely ones from X Confessor. What I really like about this is the story and I'll show all three because the story develops over time. So we've got a nice moose here who's drinking from the water, then we've got a fisherman and then the fisherman's going into the cave at night, not quite sure where. Good use of light throughout, a really nice scene and this actually illustrates what I mean about clumpy grass. So they don't distract but you get the idea that it's a field. It might be a little bit too big but it still works really nicely and a great idea is to put clumpy grass around the base of trees 
because there can be quite a sharp line where one object meets another and grassy areas can break that up nicely. The one bit of advice I would give is to decimate your meshes if they're low poly. So at the moment you can see all the quads really easily and if you decimate it, it gives it a nice sort of dynamic shape and a sort of quirky low polyness that the style's kind of famous for and it will render faster. So use the decimate and apply the decimate to give it that triangular low poly look. It's a great use of light on the nighttime scene. When you've got an extra light in there, you can bring down the blue lights so they're quite dark. If you haven't got any extra light, then you need to bring those blues up. That's really nice. Now here's some from Wizard, one of my favorites this, certainly in the running. Really nice composition, scene, colors, fantastic work. On the evening one, it's really nice to see how the clouds are just being touched with a hint of the red light that they're using. And such a cute little car. And can you see how they've used the grass to break up those edges? Love the angle of the trees where the car's going. It just looks really great. And the detail in the clouds is really nice. Don't just settle for a big blobby icosphere, break it up with lots of them and think about cloud formations. Really a great understanding of composition, light, fantastic work. And again, there's a nice story to this and the composition really aids to that story with the campfire one side and the road leading off somewhere else on the other. Here's one from Random Discorder 33. Loving the sheep, very nice. I like the colors in this one as well. Although I think the green of the grass is a bit too vivid compared to the other pastel -y colors in the tree. I would have liked if it was less saturated and kept to that sort of theme. And of course, there's a strange story going on here with this funny grave at the bottom. It's also worth thinking a bit more about composition and having your main focus to one side. It's called the rule of thirds and well worth looking up for low poly scenes and construction. Nice work though. Here's one from Metal Heart. Looks really nice, uh, good construction. So when you've got objects off to one side, it helps to draw the eye across the canvas. And also the construction of the sea line on the bottom third works really well. I would have liked to see a bit more detail in the clouds, like the previous one from Wizard, but it's still got a lot going on. There's possibly a bit too much going on in the waves because you don't get that much undulation in the sea, and therefore this would be extremely rough if it was like this but I like the thinking of adding a little bit of waviness to the sea, possibly just a bit too much here. I really like the idea of the sun slowly going down as well and the moon rising for the nighttime scene. Excellent work again, really great stuff coming out. This one's called Peace of Mind by Neck Sever, is that how you pronounce it? Lovely looking scene. I've shown the combination of night and day here. And again, you can see the usefulness of blue light overtaking away light for nighttime. It's a tough one to do this sort of zen garden sand in low poly, so they've added a texture. And generally you don't add textures for low poly, but in this case it makes a lot of sense. A really great image there, really nice. The only tiny thing I would say that the person is a bit big, because would they fit through the door of the house in the background? That may just be the perspective and it may be me being a bit ignorant. And it's only very minor. But that's often a case for people is thinking about scale and uh, placing lots of different objects in a scene. It's really important to think about how those objects relate to each other and whether they're the right size. It's easy to make that mistake. Here's a nice image from Carthy. Nice construction, thinking about the rule of thirds again. If you do have this much focus on the sky, it's a good idea to think very carefully about the color. And I don't think there's enough of a gradient in the sky going into the distance. It probably needs to be a bit more saturated right at the top. I love the shape of the trees, they're really nice and interesting. Although the ground looks a bit like a sort of deserty ground. And then we've got fir trees in the background, so there's a bit of confusion for me there, but I mean, that's a minor thing again. It's the same issue with the clumps of grass. A few clumps of grass might have been better in this situation. Also, the mountains are so high, you'd probably see snow at the top of them, so it might have been nice to see that, but a really nice piece, well done. Here's an excellent piece from Dasha Salo. It's a really fantastic idea, this, and a lovely composition. This is what's called leading lines, when you have a line going through the image that kind of leads your eye, that of the road and the snow on the road. The depth of field is really working here as well. It's not something that I like a lot, but in this case, it really is fantastic. It's just a lovely piece of work, really well put together, and it actually contradicts my point about decimating with the quads that are going on in the really deep snow on the sides, because they really work and go with the flow of the image. The little snow plow looks really cute, and I love the detail in the trees. There's just a little nick in each of these trees every now and again, which works really nicely. And the lighting works really well in each of the pieces. It's a very simplistic story, but it does tell a story still. 
going through this sort of valley road, clearing the snow. Nice, simple story, but works really nicely. Here's one from Ruri Texera. Love this. I would say actually it's not really low poly because it's put so much detail in, it's starting to look realistic, but it's a fantastic piece. And what I really like about this, it just emphasizes that idea of lighting. So if we look at the different lighting levels in each, you can see some beautiful reflections off the glass and the buildings. It just looks fantastic. They've said it's unfinished actually, and I think they were hoping to put some people in the walkways and things. But I really love it, fantastic work. Some really fantastic work there. I hope you enjoyed doing that. I certainly enjoyed looking at the pieces. Thanks very much for all the submissions. Here's a few others as well that weren't put in the final submission folder, but definitely deserve a mention. Here's one from Communist. Interesting piece here, nice construction. Kidia has done a lovely piece here as well. This is possibly unfinished, but it's got a really nice look and feel. Howling Cat have done a really fun one here. I think we all know the stories of this one. I'm liking the low poly style of the Death Star in particular. And here's one from Aussie33. Really unusual sort of conceptual art type of thing here. Very interesting idea. And one last one from Melting Top. Lovely landscape there. Thanks for all of those. I hope you've learned something in the process of doing that about lighting, certainly in the blue colors at night. I think that really makes a big difference if you don't just take away light, but you add in a blue light, that's really important. And also in terms of telling a story, and we started to touch upon the ideas of composition and color palettes. So I can see there's some real artists among you out there. So the winner is Dasha Solo with this piece. I just thought I couldn't really fault it. It was fantastic, really loved the look of it. Just superb work. It was a very difficult decision because Wizard was really close as well with their work. I think that was really fantastic as well. And there's been some lovely pieces throughout this competition. Looking forward to the next one. On that note, the next competition is a Halloween theme. So you don't have to stick to low poly this time. You can go for any style, but I want a real emphasis on lighting and story again. And maybe this time you can start looking up things about color palettes and composition to really add to your piece. So the winner will get to go up on the wall here. Not that that's anything majorly special, but that's all I can offer at the moment. The main thing about these competitions and challenges, of course, is to learn and develop. If you haven't already, get across to the Discord server. You can join in the discussion. You can say whether you agree with me or you think my opinions are rubbish. Either way, I'd be glad to meet you and talk to you and chat to you there. I'd like to quickly say as well, thanks to all the admin there who are working really hard to keep the server going. And thanks to everybody who's chatting and taking part. I'm really having a great time getting on there, discussing and chatting with people. And what I'm really enjoying is learning about people. So if you haven't already, put something in the About You section. I'd love to hear from you. So if you haven't already, put something in the About You section. I really love learning about people and I'd love to know more about you. Look forward to hearing from you and meeting you. Thanks for watching.